America first fell in love with motorized speed on the hard-packed sands of Florida's northeastern coastline at the turn of the 20th century. Beginning in 1903, the annual Carnival of Speed at Ormond Beach, a community just north of Daytona, immediately caught the attention of the world's most passionate automotive and motorcycle enthusiasts. As a result, Ormond Beach was established as the world's birthplace of speed, a reputation that the area grounds its identity to still to this day. However, as the industry and infrastructure of racing grew over the years, the pursuit of speed records shifted to more managed and manicured venues, local dirt tracks, the board track motodromes, and the larger wooden super speedways. In February 1920, Harley Davidson, who was at the height of their racing success given the powerhouse stable of racers known as the Wrecking Crew, resolved to revisit the sunny shores of Florida's eastern seaboard, aiming to set new land speed records once again on those hallowed sands. The motor company sent its team to Florida with a handful of their best factory racing motorcycles. When the team arrived in Daytona, they unloaded two 61 cubic inch two cam racers, one eight valve and the other a pocket valve version. Despite being over regulation size for records, they also unloaded an experimental 68 cubic inch eight valve two cam. The head of Harley Davidson's racing program, Bill Ottaway, sent a single cylinder overhead valve machine along with a new model 20LX streamlined sidecar and frame, nicknamed the Bullet. To supervise AAA sent R.A. Laval, the MNATA chairman W.H. Parsons attended along with master engineer C.A. Vershore. Local police chief William Young was on hand, as were representatives from Sinclair Gasoline, Firestone and Goodyear Tires, as well as several journalists and filmmakers. The military developed state-of-the-art automatic chronometer was acquired to time the runs and establish an airtight record attempt. Between February 13th and the 21st, three members of the Harley-Davidson wrecking crew, Leslie Parkhurst, Fred Ludlow, and Otto Walker, blasted past all existing international speed records in a blur. Despite heavy storms and abnormally high tides, which made the beach surface rough and peppered with driftwood, the trio, led by Red Parkers, set over 20 new professional motorcycle speed records and another four amateur high marks. The coastal wrecking crew also set eight new unofficial records with the overboard prototype 8 valve. Interestingly, Harley hired a local electrician from Daytona named Ralph E. King to run as their amateur entrant. On board a factory 61 cubic inch, two cam 8 valve, King set new amateur times for the one kilometer, one, two, and five mile distances despite never having entered a competition before. Parkhurst did most of the heavy lifting in Daytona on the professional side of things, setting 23 official and unofficial speed records, as well as establishing a never before achieved top speed of 111 miles per hour on a motorcycle, making him the fastest man on two wheels up until that point. The boundless success of Harley-Davidson's trip to Daytona in February 1920 further established their reign at the top of the American motorcycling industry. After having laid waste to most existing motorcycle land speed records, Harley's wrecking crew and its champion, Red Parkhurst, savored the accolades that poured in from every corner of the country. However, though Parkhurst could claim that he was officially the fastest man on two wheels, his crown would soon be snatched by a scrappy southern racer on a crimson rocket. Harley's longtime rivals, Indian Motorcycles, were veterans of the sands at Daytona, having been the first to compete in 1903 and returning on several occasions to maintain its domination over the years. As it stumbled trying to retain its long-held status as the world's preeminent motorcycle brand following the turmoil of World War I, Indian quickly responded upon hearing the news of Harley's conquest to the birthplace of speed. Two months later, on April 12, 1920, the train car from Springfield was unloaded in Ormond Beach and four crates holding within them four factory racing Indians set out for the coast. Indian's longtime competition workhorse, the eight valve, was sent, as was a single cylinder four valve version. The factory also sent a 61 cubic inch production power plus, but perhaps the most significant was the new racing version built from the same platform. The new engine was a side valve V-twin with new internals, modified cylinders, and a special Shevler carburetor, all set into a new keystone frame. Indian's newest racer proved unbeatable, and as a result of the accomplishments made in Florida, the motorcycle would become known as the Daytona, a 
crown jewel of Indian performance for years to come. To jockey the machines, Indians selected their young star rider from Birmingham, Alabama, Eugene Walker, a lightning fast natural talent who garnered respect and admiration from his peers. In hopes of securing the national and international amateur records as well, Indian asked Walker to choose an amateur teammate, so he selected a local friend named Herbert McBride to join him on the attempt. Over the course of three days, Walker and McBride tore apart the scorecard set back in February by Parkhurst and the wrecking crew, between them setting 24 new American and world speed records. Eugene Walker inked his name into the history books as the world's fastest man on two wheels, establishing new records in every distance on every machine at his disposal. On board the eight-valve warhorse, Walker officially covered a kilometer, the international standard of speed in those days, at a rate of 115.79 miles per hour. On average, Walker's speeds were 5 to 10 miles per hour faster than any of those from the Harley-Davidson wrecking crew. Herbert McBride, the Birmingham machinist, turned loose Springfield's finest machines and swept the amateur record books clean as well, setting new times in every distance on board each of the four machines, even beating a few of the professional times established by Parkhurst a few months prior. Though Indian's monumental effort at Daytona came as a slap in the face of a boastful Harley-Davidson, the motor company would respond in kind, mounting a campaign that resulted in winning every national championship event the following season. It had only been a year since professional motorcycle racing had returned to America following its suspension in World War I. Still, when this remarkable footage was initially captured in February 1920, the Harley-Indian Wars had reached a fevered pitch setting the stage for an iconic rivalry that would endure for decades.